The European Poker Tour is back in Barcelona for the first super high roller of the season. For me, the most exciting events are always the super high rollers, the competition against the toughest players in the world. These high buy-in events attract the fiercest rivalries. When you're winning, other players tend to be a little bit afraid of you, and you can run them over. 16 remain, but only eight get paid. In the few super high rollers I've played, I haven't cashed a single one. I really do want to win this tournament. Every contest comes down to one crucial moment. One false move and two days of intense play can count for nothing. <laughs> it's time to decide our final eight. Barcelona attracts tourists from across the globe. With its rich culture, outstanding architecture, and sporting brilliance, it's only fitting that the biggest ever EPT Super High Roller is held here on Spanish shores. With the prospect of a high buy-in reload tournament, the Catalan capital saw an invasion of supreme poker talent. As expected, there were also a few whale sightings along the way, adding value to this Spanish skirmish. 55 contenders sat down with bulging bankrolls and an initial buy-in of 50k. Before the start of day two, players could reload and even register late. Some big names took advantage of a second chance, with former world champ Jonathan Duhamel needing a third bullet. Okay, where do I get now? Ouch! With nine reloads, we can confirm our all-conquering champion will not only take the prestigious title, but also a top prize of over 1 million euros. Last time, King Dan declared his authority over fellow big stack Mike McDonald to maintain his tournament ship lead. While Russian court jester Artem Litmanov entertained all with his shenanigans. Well, almost everyone. Closing the show was a tale of redemption, as Mike Timex McDonald eliminated Vadim Kurzovich in 17th place to break the 2 million ship mark. Nice play. Closing the gap on the 3.5 million ships of our tournament leader, Dan Smith. So, we're down to 16. Bubble time. Oh, no. They're paying 10. Nine. Nope. Eight. That's a bingo. Seems like a long way to go to get paid. Well, making the final table guarantees a min cash of 123K. <laughs> Duhamel wouldn't even have broken even. Sorry, John. Meanwhile, the winner will get more than a million, plus the trophy. That trophy is so fetch. Have you seen it? I know. It's like a shiny skyscraper with funky angles. Love the angles. Gorgeous. Looking to find all the angles at our feature table is JC Alvarado. With many members of the high-stakes poker community vying for the title, the Mexican pro will have to maneuver through a field of familiar faces. I'm friendly with uh, Dan and Mike and a few other guys. I busted one of my best friends yesterday. You know, there's a little bit of a metagame going. We know each other's thought processes, so you got to think about that as well. As the saying goes, keep your friends close, but your enemies closer. Something that Mike Timex McDonald knows only too well. One of my good friends who I haven't just get seated at my table, who just say like, you know, I look as if I want to kill them at the table. And I guess I do have that effect sometimes, I guess. Joining the Canadian pro on our second table of eight is a real mixed bag of proven megastars, a respected amateur, a high stakes fiend, and a crazy showman. All of them hoping to close the gap on our red hot chip leader. Dan Smith Holler has been raking in the dollar during 2012, can he continue his unprecedented run of form here? I'm trying to make a run for player of the year. I won the $100,000 tournament in Australia this year. Then in Monaco, they had three $5,000 tournaments and I won them all. When you're on a winning streak, your confidence is at an all-time high. I think you're more likely to continue to make good decisions. Eight will leave empty-handed. Eight will advance to the final table. It's bubble time. Who will make the money? at the pokestars.com EPT Barcelona Super High Roller. EPT season nine, 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 Super High Roller, 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 day two, two, two. Now you guys are gonna do some of that in post so I don't sound stupid, right? Dan Smith is our chip leader. He's been poning souls. 
JC Alvarado noticing that Steve O'Dwyer is working on his second bullet. First name, please. Steve. Low to the ego. <laughs> oh man, he's been on like so many feature tables too. Lol. Artem Litvinov's a new cast member. We added him during summer hiatus. He's the wacky new neighbor. Litvinov is the short stack at the feature table, playing just 24 big blinds. So he'll probably be looking to flip, both metaphorically and literally. We've got two guys with seven-figure stacks, including Dan Smith, the overwhelming tournament chip leader. Let's see who's on our secondary feature table. Did you win anything the first year? Yeah, the EPT I won, I won that year. And then did well in a bunch of stuff in Australia. It was like... Yeah, just like absurd how good I ran when I first started playing live. When he was a teenager. Seidel's all. Check out these race with bra. Do not let this teensy score fool you. This guy's an absolute shark in the cash games. The guy's such a shark, he's getting his own week of programming on the Discovery Channel. Blinds at 8,000, 16,000 with a 2,000 ante. Action has been folded around to Inyat Liviu. The Romanian pro has pocket tens. And he is raising, makes it 32,000. Ryan Kamaya folds. Steve O'Dwyer will pass the Jack-8. Woof. 8-7 suited for JC Alvarado. On the button, yum, yum. If this hand looks delicious, then being in position is like looking at its picture on the menu. Alvarado will call. Litvinov gives up the small blind. Dan Smith in the big blind as Queen-6 suited. Dan's getting good pot odds. A call here would be borderline if he didn't have all the chips in the universe, but he does, so it's totes fine. So Smith calls as well. We are going three-way to the flop. That flop, 6-9 do. Second pair for Smith, an up-and-down draw for Alvarado. Livio still leads with tens. Livio was the original raiser. 55. And he's got the most to protect against. Dan Smith checks to him. Livio bets 55,000. I don't know that this bet will get either of these players to fold, however. Alvarado calls. Livio's actually got two blockers to his hand. Smith calls as well. It's a three-way to the turn. Calls a little questionable, but Dan's getting stupid pot odds again. And he hits another six on the turn. Trips for the chip leader. This is a grosser turn than the twist in the crying game. JC is now dead to four outs. Dan all but locks his hand up, and no one's really likely to think this card changed anything. Dan checks a second time. Livio bets a second time, 125,000. Action on Alvarado. He's getting a decent price to chase his straight. Meanwhile, Dan's got a super disguised monster. Alvarado calls. JC was getting an even better price, assuming Dan comes along for the ride. And spoiler alert, he's not folding. But is he raising? No, he's calling. Dan overcalls on three streets. Gotta wonder if anyone's spidey sense is tingling yet. Three-way to the river, which is another six. This is the second time in the tournament that Dan Smith has had quads. The second time today. All pairs now have full houses. Just like Livy over there has got. Smith checks a third time. Liviu now checks as well. Wow, either a very astute player or a guy who's going to lose value a lot of the time. I'm willing to chalk it up to some kind of insane physical read. Alvarado with the missed draw. Yeah, but it's a straight flush draw now. He waves the white flag. Because Livio somehow has the clairvoyance to check the six nuts, Dan Smith gets locked out of the first national bank of value, Fifth Street Branch. Just quads, guys. Just quads. These any good? Quads any good? Now up to nearly four million in chips. Just almost four times the tournament average. No big deal. Over to the other table. Talal Shikurchi has checked his pair of sevens on the flop. John Juanda with king high. Which is sometimes going to be good in this spot. Will bet. 62,000. Kirch, he's got a very decent hand that he should never be folding. I'm actually okay with a raise here, but you don't want to get blown off of it, I guess. Yeah, he does have the up and down draw to go with bottom pair. So he calls Juanda's bet. Little dribbly call. The turn. Brings a six. Chikurchi now with two pair. Yeah, but this board looks really terrible for him. He checks a second time. And this is a great card for Juanda to keep firing. Juanda 
will fire by the looks of things. Yep, 120,000 he's counted out there. Now, shakurchi has got a really strong hand that he probably isn't going to fold, but if he calls here, he's got to be prepared to call big bet on the river. He does call. The pot now stands at 478,000. What will the river bring? Another eight. Now, first glance, this card looks terrible. It counterfeited Shakurchi's two pair. But a lot of the time in this spot, if Jawanda isn't already crushing you, that eight's not going to make much of a difference. Jawanda gives it up on the river. He checks behind, shows the king high. Shakurchi shows the seven and wins the pot. Jawanda gave up. Shakurchi didn't even have to stomach the river bet. Jawanda probably realizing he blew it, but not firing that third barrel. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe Shakurchi would have stationed him like a boss. Maybe he saved money. Right now at home, everyone is searching for searching for Sugarman. Try to stay with me. Lines up to 10,000, 20,000 as we head back to the feature table. I like my chances. <laughs> you like queens? I said I like my chances with queens. Good? Good. You play? You can't ask that. I'll see. <laughs> okay. This guy's nuts. You play. Yeah. No? Why? I don't want you to yell at me. Okay. <laughs> Guys, please fold. Then, then don't play. Love this guy. Litvinov has raised to 55,000. If you play, I don't, I don't talk. If you, okay. okay. <laughs> Thank you. Tobias, Tobias, Tobias. Tobias. I don't speak. You play, I don't speak. Tiff, you big blind. Okay, thank you. <laughs> and thank you, and thank you, my friends. JC is not getting a great price. Action. Yeah, it's, a, it's a short stack. It's a short stack. However, we know he's dominated, so he's actually got some pretty bad reverse implied odds here. JC's calling. Senora, please king. King in the flop. This guy is a riot. Well, it's a queen four six flop. Big whiffs all around. Ace high still good. <laughs> Alvarado checks. <laughs> okay, okay. Living off bets. You fold? Uh, yeah, I, I have aces. Do? Ace, yeah. uh, Two aces. Okay. Two aces, guys. Two aces. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Prego, prego. A Russian speaking Italian in Spain. I love it. On a scale of one to entertaining, just how entertaining is Artem Litvinov to watch? Please let us know, and please tag your response, EPT Barcelona. Catalan capital is the home of one of the most famous football clubs in the world. Barcelona FC's electric style of play excites and entertains huge crowds. With the new camp at capacity, its total attendance reaches almost 100,000. Which coincidentally is a figure some of our super high rollers may wince at. 15% of the field used at least one re-entry, leaving them 100,000 euros in the red. But only one of the reckless reloaders still remains. On day one, Steve O'Dwyer was the first person to revisit the registration desk. It turned out to be money well spent. He ended day one as overwhelming tournament chip leader. A min cash here at the EPT Barcelona Super High Roller will see him just about break even. No pressure then. Well, that's why they're all here, James, to be just about break even players. They're just here for love of the game. So breaking even does beat bubbling. Inyat Liviu is open with a raise to 40,000 with Jack. Steve O'Dwyer has called with Ace Jack. Aces for JC Alvarado. Ay ya! Surprised Steve didn't three bet and try to get it in with his stack. But he's sure lucky he didn't do that now. Wow! Liviu is going to be in a world of hurt too. Almost no shot he doesn't get it in with his stack. Actually, a great spot for Alvarado. When he raises from the button, it's so going to look like a squeeze play. It won't even have to look like a squeeze play. He's up against two relative monsters. So there is the three bet. He makes it a total of 120,000. Oh, Dan Smith's got two shots to make quads. What's he doing? 
So back on Liviu. He's got like 22 BBs and two JJs. Seems pretty easy to ME. He's all in. I think Steve can see the writing on the wall. Oh. He folds. JC Alvarado snap calls. In yet, Liviu is at risk and worse than a four to one dog because O'Dwyer folded a jack. Pretty standard hand, just unlucky for Liviu. The flop is all spades, means nothing for Liviu because Alvarado has the ace of spades. Though it doesn't affect any of his out. It's all over. Oh, sweet. The nut flush for Alvarado, Livio drawing dead. Relax. Steve O'Dwyer got pretty lucky to get out of that unscathed. He would have lost to both players. More like JC Avocado since he just made guacamole out of Inyat Livio. So we're down to the final 15. And JC Alvarado is now amongst the tournament chip leaders. Playing a stack of 1.35 million. He is third in chips overall behind Anatoly Gertovoy and Dan Smith. And the bottom half of the leaderboard features the tournament short stacks. The players at immediate risk, Litvinov, McCrink, and Chartier. So we're still seven eliminations from the money. Sheesh. On the secondary feature table, Mike McDonald flopped a set of nines, which improved to a full house on the turn. Gertovoy flopped top pair and a flush draw. Mike's got the third nuts, but it's almost always the best hand in this spot. Looks like he's going for value. 214,000 in the pot so far. And Mike will bet 133K. Can't expect Gertavoy to get away from this just yet, if ever. Gertavoy is not counting out calling chips. Sure ain't. Gertavoy raises to 300,000. It's a bizarre almost min raise. Gertavoy likely makes it thinking he has the best hand and just wants to get some more chips in. But the problem with this is that when you're losing, you bloat the pot, which means you end up losing even more when you do lose. How will Mike McDonald respond? Looks like a call. It is a call. It's 814,000 in the middle. Gertavoy can only win with a king on the river. It's an eight. Luckily for Gertavoy, not the eight of clubs. That eight changes absolutely nothing about this board. Remember, Gertavoy was the last aggressor. Mike McDonald checks to him. Gertavoy checks behind. He shows his king. And Mike McDonald will show his full house. Gertavoy knew enough to check behind somehow. McDonald really hoping he would bet there. Nice check behind. A uh, good run up for me. I think he would have preferred a club on the river. Gertavoy seems a little tilted, but he got off pretty easy after snap checking that river. Timex probably would have checked on 6th, 7th in the ocean as well. So this tournament has a 3 million euro prize pool with more than a million and that trophy for the eventual champion. Still a long way to go for that min cash, though. Pocket sixes for JC Alvarado as we return to the main feature table. Well, JC's on a bit of a heater. He raises, makes it 45,000. Speaking of heaters, this is the one guy at the table running hotter than JC. This kid makes more hands than a mannequin factory. Dan Smith has King Jack off. Calls from the cutoff. Speaking of, have you ever seen Mannequin 2 on the move? It's really underrated. You may be the only person on the planet who's seen that movie. <laughs> Tobias Reinkemeyer has Jack-9 suited in the big blind. It's a decent hand, and he's getting ridiculous pot odds. He calls as well. Even though we know he's dominated by Dan. Three-way to the flop. And Tobias Reinkemeyer flops a full house. Dan Smith flops trips. Nothing for Alvarado, the original raiser. Action's been checked to Smith. He bets 85K. Dan Smith has made another huge hand. This time it's not the biggest, though. Reinkemeyer calls. After betting a call, not much shot JC sticks around here. He folds. Heads up to the turn. Which is a six. JC so lucky he folded on the flop. Reinkemeyer checks again. Smith bets again. 181,000. Sick cooler developing here. 
Ryan Kamaya calls. Both players are playing this like they absolutely know they have the best hand, and most of the time they'd both be right. As for right now, Dan is in deep doo-doo. The river's a king. Smith now has a better full house. OMG. This kid spikes more than a lie detector on Capitol Hill. Ryan Kamaya checks, hoping to induce some kind of bluff from Smith. This is not a bluff. This is a value bet. 384,000, and it's bound to get paid off. It may even get raised. This is a slam dunk value raise situation. There are only two hands on the planet that are beating you, Kings and King Jack. King Jack is the more believable of the two if it weren't for the fact that it would have to be the case Jack. Hold on. Ryan Kamaya shoves. The double check. Call. Dan Smith calls, and we lose the German from the tournament. Like the refrigerator is at the Center for Disease Control, this is just a sick cooler. Good hand. No kidding. Tobias, it's okay if you want to scream. All right, good luck. Yeah. Somebody go ask Dan Smith if it's uncomfortable having that horseshoe up there. Looks uncomfortable. What? I mean under his hat. 14 players remain, and Dan Smith now has close to 5.3 million. My name is Dan Smith. I am 23 years old. I'm a professional poker player. I was six years old when I started playing chess. My uncle had gotten me a dino checker set, and I wanted to play with my sister, and I grabbed the wrong box, and I was and still am very stubborn, so I insisted we play this new game. And within like two days, I was beating her, and she was five years older than me. And then like, a week, I was beating my dad and I was only six. So my parents looked in the newspaper and there was a local chess club. And I started playing local tournaments and then I got to the point where I would travel around the US until I got to be quite good. I think it's not a coincidence that a lot of people who used to play like chess tend to do well at poker. I think it's probably the same part of your brain. It would be very cool to win this. You certainly have to be more on the ball when you're playing against the best players in poker. I can't remember the hand rankings for chess. Which one wins, the horsey or the castly thing? Also, I can't remember who the chip leader is. Does anybody know? We're gonna head over to the other table. Mike McDonald involved in a hand against Talal Shikurchi. Both players have very strong hands. Big top pairs on a dry board. Shikurchi has checked the turn. Mike McDonald bets 177,000. I think Shikurchi has to call here with a plan to also call the river. He's beating all Mike's bluffs and some of his value bets. That's if he can withstand the stare. Dun, dun, dun. Mike McDonald has more intense stares than the Empire State Building. Shikurchi does call. Nothing can stop the stare. The river, an inconsequential deuce. Not much doing there. Shikurchi checks again. Mike McDonald will no doubt bet for value, and Shikurchi will probably call him. Mike McDonald, reach for chips. V-A-L-U-E. He bets 399,000. Big bet. I think Shikurchi might be compelled to call here. You know who else had a pretty intense stare? The Care Bears. Just saying. They were fuzzier than Mike McDonald, and significantly fuzzier than Talal Shikurchi. But not as adorable. Wow! Nice fold. I don't know if that's Shikurchi being weak tight or he just saw Mike McDonald's inner knit, but well played, Mr. Shikurchi. There's just one dangerous drawback to a stare like that. Your opponent gets a heck of a good look at your face, too. Very impressive fold. We're gonna head back to the main feature table as the blinds go up to 12,000 and 24,000 with a 3,000 ante. Now's when the real poker starts. Dan Smith will be under the gun. He folds. Hold it around to Steve O'Dwyer. He is super short. Market tens. Hold. He shoves. JC Alvarado. 
King three. He'll pass. Artem Litvinov calls with ace three suited. Kind of an easy call with his stack. Steve had barely any chips, and he's got already covered. Litvinov the player at risk, and a two to one dog. And not much for him on that flop. Steve flops a gut shot to go with his already ahead pair. Is Litvinov taking his shoes off? Ace on the turn. Now he's back in it. Ace? Yep. <laughs> Steve now way behind, but he does have outs. Any jack or 10. The river is a six. Damn it. Why, why damn it? Does that mean something different in Russian? Yeah, I'm sure he's a little less charming when he's crippling you. Sorry, Steve-o. Solitvinov doubles up but still only has 579,000, about half the tournament average, around 23 big blinds. We'll find out how you can get live updates during the European Poker Tour by visiting pokerstars.com. Welcome back to the PokerStars.com EPT Barcelona Super High Roller. Before the break, we witnessed a sickening boat over boat situation. German pro Tobias Reinkemeyer flopped jacks full of nines and went into maximum extraction mode. His opponent also connected heavily on the flop, but the river saw King Dan upgrade his trips to a better full house, sending our EPT8 Grand Final Super High Roller runner up to the rail. It seems this absolute cooler of a hand played itself but we caught up with Dan Smith to ask for his thoughts. I know Tobias is an active player. And I know that he'll be calling with a, a lot of hands in the big blind. We went three ways to the flop. They both checked to me. So I bet Tobias calls JC Folds. Turn card, please. I would keep bluffing here to apply pressure. He checked to me. And I bet again as a value bet. And bets 181,000. I expect to have the best hand the majority of the time. And he called again. Once we get to the river, it's clear that he has something reasonably strong. I bet 384,000. My most likely bluff hand is probably Queen 10. And Queen 10 just made a straight, so now I beat three jacks. He's gonna need a jack to call me. And he's unlikely to fold a jack for a reasonably sized bet. Hold on. He ended up going all in, which is just absolutely fantastic for me. Call. Cool. And I called and he had jack nine and I sucked at him on the river. I like all of my decisions and it's good to play pots in position and he and I both had a lot of chips. And I think on a lot of boards, I'd be able to try to win the pot uh, from him without improving my hand. Dan says he likes all the decisions he made on the hand, but probably not as much as he liked the river card. <laughs> am I right, people? Seriously, though, am I right? On this particular occasion, yes. Yes! Action on Mike Watson. 6-10 off. That's going in the muck. Jim McCrink has ace-9. And he is folding. Elodie Sahamias also gets out of the way. Ace four for the short stack, Steve O'Dwyer, he's all in. Steve O'Dwyer moves all in for two big blinds. JC Alvarado, his pocket seven's on the button. Well, JC's definitely not folding. Must be thinking of giving Steve a little protection, maybe. Well, it is a re-raise, a three bet to 100,000. Litvinov's out as is Dan Smith. So O'Dwyer at risk. He has one over card, about a 31% chance of winning this pot and surviving. Good luck. Thank you. Wouldn't be too bad for JC if he ended up doubling up his friend here to six big blinds. No ace on the flop. No ace, no counterfeit likely, bad backdoors, not looking good for Steve-O. 
Three outs for O'Dwyer. Make that seven. We have a sweat. We have a sweat. Ace or a five. It's an eight. O'Dwyer is done. Steve O.D. is now Steve O.U.T. I wonder if he remembers he bought in twice, too. Yeah, he probably remembers. He was the first player to use his second bullet at the start of day one, and he was the last reloader standing. Well, at least he got that souvenir cup. So we're down to 12, and our final 12 are all in for just 50,000 euros. JC's wasted no time picking up another hand. Ace queen in the cutoff, he raises to 50,000. Pocket eight for Dan Smith in the small blind. JC with overcards. This time it's Dan with the pair. Smith re raises to 155,000. JC calls. He'll play the flop in position. With a great hand to do it with. Right in the door. An A6 deuce flop. Smith bets. Alvarado now with the best hand. Typically, the play here would be to just flat call. Looks like we're going to get an atypical move. It's a raise from Alvarado to 360,000. But I like it. He's doing this against an aggro player, trying to make it look bluffy so he could snap call a shove. Call. Smith calls. A million in the middle as we go to the turn which is the Jack of Diamonds. Alvarado now with a flush draw to go with his pair of aces. Smith also has a diamond draw, pretty worthless one at that. And by raising the flop, JC's made a shove here fairly reasonable, barely less than a pot-sized bet, which he can do with confidence now that he's picked up that diamond draw and more equity. Smith checked to him. Mullen. And he does shove. Dan probably knows that he's almost never good here unless JC's lost his mind a little bit. And when you've been running as hot as Dan, some players are going to be tempted to stack off here, thinking that flashing star never goes away and Mario's going to stay invincible forever. He thinks better of it. Smith lays it down. Well played by JC, who's quietly adding to that stack. He's playing 84 big blinds. Dan Smith's still doing okay, I think. 197 big blinds. Over to the other table. Anatoly Gertovoy has flopped the nuts straight. Mike McDonald has a flush draw and a gut shot. Mike's still got plenty of equity. Gertovoy has bet 100,000. With a gut shot and flush draws, I don't see Mike folding. Mike McDonald will call. These players going heads up to the turn. Which is a diamond. Ooh, Anatoly gets sucked out on. McDonald with a lock on the hand. He checks to Gertevoy. And Gertevoy is reaching for chips. Oof. The Russian makes it 300,000. Well, I think I know what's going to happen here, but oh my god, who is that standing behind Mike McDonald? McDonald shoves. He bets enough to put Anatoly Gertovoy all in. Gertovoy's in a really tough spot here. Yes, there's a flush out there, but the problem is that Mike could easily be doing this with a host of hands that Gertovoy's got in really bad shape. Call. Gertovoy calls. Uh, and we'll see that he is drawing dead. That was a lot of chips. A 2.5 million chip pot. He's going to need that hoodie. Because that was a cooler. Anatoly Gertovoy eliminated in 12th place. Sorry. Mm. Hi, guys. And Mike McDonald up to over 3.6 million. Hard to believe that Timex is only 22 years old because it feels like he's been on the EPT forever. He's still the youngest ever European Poker Tour main event winner. When I won an EPT in Germany, I was 18 in four months, but I had already played 10 major live tournaments. I just traveled all over the world that year. I was, you know, four months after my 18th birthday, and I won it for like just under $1.4 million, which is still my biggest score to date. In hindsight, I'm shocked by how unfazed I was by the money. Why shouldn't it phase him? He was an 18-year-old millionaire. You know, the kind of thing we went to see movies about in the 90s. 
Remember that movie Blank Check? This kid's Dortmund check was for more than that blank check. Underrated movie. Yeah, Back at the feature table, Artem Litvinov has picked up Ace Jack under the gun plus one. He raises to 55,000. Jack 10 for Dan Smith. Litvinov has got him dominated. I had Ace 10. The chip leader decides to fold. Mike Watson on the button. Also folds. What's Jim McCrink got in the small blind? Not enough to play with. And Ilali Sahamias has king-queen suited. Once again, neither one of these guys has stacked all that deep. 429K might sound like a lot, but it's not even 20 bigs. Plus, it's queen suited. It's queen of the jungle. All in. Ilali shoves. Decision back on Litvinov. Seems fairly obvious. Well, Litvinov's going to give it some thought. While he's thinking, let's head over to the other table because John Juwanda is all in. Caught by Mike McDonald. Juwanda, big dog here. McDonald already has a huge stack and he could be adding almost a million more to it. Juwanda needs to see a seven. Nothing really for him on that flop. Jack's holding strong. Juwanda does have a backdoor straight draw. Well, now he's drawing to one of the two sevens in the deck. 5% chance of survival. It's a four, so Mike McDonald eliminates John Juwanda. Luckbox Juwanda must have forgotten the key. So Juwanda out in 11th. Yet another high roller making a 50,000 euro donation to this tournament, and we're still two players away from the money. Now, we just had that all-in at the secondary table. Of course, we have an all-in on our main feature table. Artem Litvinov is still in the tank. Teresa, the tournament director, has been called to the table. OK, time. Ilari's had enough. He's called the clock on Litvinov. Artem will have one minute to make a decision. OK, you have 60 seconds, and then I'll make a countdown from 10 to 0. 0 is a dead hand, and the time starts now. Can you save me 10 seconds? Save I will. Save me 10 seconds, I will. okay? Yes. 12 seconds. I'll save you 12 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I'll even do 30. I think he's looking for a coin. I'm not sure what he's doing. That's the second time he went to the purse. Did you see my cards? Did you see my cards? Don't ask. Okay. It's okay. Whatever, I have good cards. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. No, no, just choking. He's really not supposed to be talking to anyone on the rail, but I think he's actually just looking for a coin. 30 seconds. How much? 30 plus 10. Which one is which one? Which one is called? You three? I hope you call, but I, I want to know which one is which one. No, yeah, okay. Whatever. I don't think he's going to share that information. Iller is on to him. <laughs> <laughs> nice catch. Ten, nine, eight, Find it. Seven, six, Hurry. five, four, three, two, one, zero. It's a dead hat. Living off folds. Face up. Uh, eight, chat. Go ahead and say it. You win. Thanks. Now, I'd be pretty mad at him for wasting everybody's time if it wasn't so hilarious. I mean, a lot of people are going to stall and they're not even going to entertain us while they do it, so I far prefer this. How do you feel about players who take forever to make a decision? Let us know and tag your tweets, EPT Barcelona. The Spanish are renowned for their passionate and fiery personalities. Here at thepokestars.com EPT Barcelona Super High Roller, we're not short of a few characters, including the eccentric Artem Litvinov. Less concerned with cards and more interested in his flamboyant tomfoolery. It's about time we learned a little more about this joker in the deck. Меня зовут Артем Литвинов, я из Санкт-Петербурга. Всем привет. 
это не первый турнир, я практически во всех турнирах хайроллеров, в Монте-Карло, в общем, везде играл. Да, ну хороший турнир был -то по 25 тысяч, и это был последний турнир Монте-Карло. Ну вот там получилось попасть за финальный стол. А, к сожалению, только пятое место занял. Ну, эти турниры играю, потому что в них интересно играть. Я... Ну, монетка это скорее больше для соперников такой шоу, когда монетку я кидаю. Конечно, решение у меня уже принято, что делать. Coin said you win. Я думаю, что, конечно, я не настолько суеверен. Стул поменял, была такая ситуация, что мы сидели за столом, и слева от меня сидел Дэн Смит, у которого было 5 миллионов фишек. То есть каждую раздачу он показывал какие-то чудеса. Чудеса, что у него очень хорошая карта заходит. И когда был обеденный перерыв, он ушел, я решил все-таки ему дать свой стул, а его, а его стул взять себе. И, в общем-то, эта примета сработала, потому что Дэн Смит проиграл сразу же два банка, не купив, чему он очень удивился. А я, в общем-то, выиграл сразу же туз-3 в две десятки, важный Алын. Эйс? Yep. Поменяв стул, я стал верить в то, что у меня будет вот его фарт. Пошло, мешань пошло. Теперь на протяжении всего года мне будет заходить так же, как у этому американцу. Well, we have to Lines are now 15 and 30,000 with a 4,000 ante. Actions on Dan Smith. Struggling to kill his cards with all those chips on the table. What a problem to have. Mike Watson. Queen, three of clubs. He folds. Jim McCrink. Jim McCraig continues to pick up hands that ensure he gets almost no TV time despite making the final two tables of a super high roller tournament. He mucks the seven deuce. King seven suited for Ilari. And he is all in from the small blind. Shippity ship ship Sharu. A7 for Litvinov. I was gonna say he'd get looked up pretty light, but this isn't even light for this situation. Litvinov calls. And he's got Sahami Ace dominated. Yeah, I'd be standing up too. Sahami Ace is a three to one dog. Five cards to come. Lucky Chewy watching from the rail. There is a king on the flop. Now Litvinov is reverse dominated. He's the one that'll have to catch the three outer. Two streets to do it. Sahami is an 83% favorite to double up. Well, the six on the turn brings some chop possibilities. Five on the river would see these two split it. The river is a 10. So Ilari Sahami is doubles up through Artem Litvinov. 294, yeah. Litvinov didn't lose a big pot, but it was two thirds of his stack. Now he's left with only five bigs. Well, it looks like JC Alvarado has wasted no time getting stuck in at the secondary table. He's got Peter Jetton all in and at risk with a dominated hand. Jetton doesn't have a huge stack either, but those chips are all but guaranteed to end up in JC's stack. Not looking good for Jetton. The flop looks better for Jetton than it really is. He still needs runner-runner. He's drawing dead on the turn. So Peter Jetton eliminated in 10th place. And he is Jetton out of here. Even I don't like that joke. That means we are down to nine. We are on the bubble. It's time for everyone to redraw for seats on the main stage. Artem Litvinov wants to hold on to his lucky seat. He's literally carrying the chair over to a new spot. I love it. And I love that no one's giving him a hard time about it. The EPT really is for the players. These are the final nine. Dan Smith, close to five million in ships. Mike McDonald and JC Alvarado also have big stacks. Everyone else is pretty short. Especially Artem Litvinov, just five big blinds. Not only are we at the final nine, but we are on the bubble. Next elimination gets a big fat bagel, or as they say here in Spain, a grande gordo bagel. Action has been folded around to Mike Watson. Line still 15-30. He passes the jack eight. Dan Smith, 5-3 suited. 
He's in late position. Flexing those chip muscles. He raises to 65,000. Jim McCrink. Fold that 6-4. Jacks for Ilari Sahamias and he moves all in. Yep. Back around to Dan Smith, who quickly mucks. Standard shove, standard fold. And the crowd goes wild. So when we lose a player, we will crack open that 3 million euro prize pool. Eighth place pays 123 grand. The winner gets more than a million. Kind of a big bubble here. Ninth place gets zero. Eric Seidel has folded. Mike Watson has 10-6. He also passes. Ace King for Dan Smith. He has all the chips and all the good cards. Raising with a legitimate hand this time, 65,000. The short stacked Artem Litvinov with Ace 10 suited. He's got to push here. He's just unlucky to run into Ace King, or maybe even worse. He moves all in for 159,000. We know he's going to get called in at least one spot. JC Alvarado in the small blind. Folds an ace. Mike McDonald. Queen nine, gives up the big blind. Dan Smith calls, Litvinov's at risk. Oh, I wish he could have at least got one last coin flip in. I'm gonna be so bummed if he doesn't make the final table. Maybe Shikurchi will do something funny and entertaining, like sit on an app ball. What do you think, Talal, huh? Litvinov looking for a 10, or hearts. Only one heart on the flop. There is a 20% chance of a split pot. A 13% chance that Litvinov wins outright and doubles up. I never thought I'd say this before, but come on, Russia! The turn card is a diamond. Litvinov needs a 10 for the win. Only two left in the deck. The river is an eight. Dan Smith's ace-king holds. Artem Litvinov is the bubble boy. So much for the lucky chair. And the rich get richer. Dan Smith adding to that massive chip stack. Artem Litvinov has provided us with so much entertainment, but he will not cash in this super high roller tournament. Everyone else now guaranteed nearly 123,000 euros. Dan Smith looking to win a lot more than that. He's one of three big stacks coming into the final. He has just over 5 million. Mike McDonald has 4.65 million. JC Alvarado, 3.1 million. Everyone else well below average. And when you consider the way Smith is playing and running, he's a big favorite. There's no pressure in being Shipley. I can play loosely and no one can really even put a dent in me. I'm just playing my cards and things are working out well. Next time, it's the final table. Eric Seidel looks to add a super high roller trophy to his already impressive cabinet. For me, the most exciting events are always the super high rollers. You know, Sahamias won't give his game plan away. I don't want to talk about that. And Dan Smith's hoping his dominance of the tournament continues. When you're on a winning streak, your confidence is at an all-time high. We're in the money, but only one player will walk away over a million euros richer.